Welcome back to Dan's on Fandoms, I'm Dan. With rumors circulating that a sequel to Star Wars Rebels is potentially in the works, and since Danny and I recently finished a rewatch of Star Wars Rebels, we wanted to share some interesting facts about the Ghost Crew and figured, let's start with our homeboy Kanan Jarrus. Here are 10 interesting facts about Kanan Jarrus, Jedi Knight. Number 1. Kanan's Jedi Master was Depa Balaba. Depa Balaba was a Jedi Master that served on the Jedi Council prior to and during the Clone Wars. She was trained by Mace Windu and was widely considered one of the most enlightened Jedi of her time. Kanan met Depa in an interesting way. One day, before his initiate trials, he was practicing dueling and he hit his head. Caleb, as he was known at that time, was sent to the infirmary where he saw an unconscious Depa Balaba recovering in a Bacta tank. He felt an instant connection to her and after he left, she actually woke up. She later asked Caleb to become her apprentice after saving his life during the Jedi Temple bombings by Rackham Seer. Depa sadly met her demise during Order 66. She sacrificed herself to protect Kanan when their clone trooper battalion turned against them. In the new Clone Wars season 7 trailer, it looks like we see a young Caleb Doom standing next to Depa Balaba along with Yoda, Mace Windu, Plo Koon, and others. Number 2. Kanan's actual name is Caleb Doom. Following Order 66 and the Jedi Purge, as a means of survival, Caleb Doom changed his name to Kanan Jarrus. At the end of the Clone Wars, Caleb found himself on the jungle planet Moraga. When he was exiting his starship named The Escape, he was met by the Moragan Morfizo. Morfizo asked him who he was and Caleb turned to him, stating that his name was Kanan Jarrus. And from then on, Caleb Doom would be referred to as Kanan Jarrus. Number 3. Kanan's current lightsaber is two different parts. After Order 66, Kanan had tried to disguise his former life as a Jedi Padawan. Kanan got rid of his Jedi robes, cut off his Padawan braid, and kept his lightsaber locked away. However, in his travels, Kanan did collect spare Jedi parts. Kanan eventually would keep his lightsaber in separate pieces on his belt as it would be too dangerous to openly carry it. He kept the main body and grip of the hilt at the small of his back and the emitter shroud on his side. Keeping his lightsaber disassembled in this manner allowed him to keep his lightsaber on him at pretty much all times but disguised it in a way that would not rouse suspicion. Years later, during his fight with Rook, while rescuing Hera Syndulla, Kanan's lightsaber was kicked off the building they fought on in Capital City on Lothal. The lightsaber was rediscovered shortly afterwards by Lothal's governor, Arinda Price, who presented it to Grand Admiral Thrawn as proof of the Jedi's death, and we don't know where Kanan's lightsaber wound up after that. Number 4. Kanan long forsook the Jedi ways. As the Empire tightened their grip on the galaxy and continued to pursue and kill Jedi that were discovered to be alive, Kanan began disguising himself as a freighter pilot, a bounty hunter, and even a frontier ranger so as not to arouse suspicion from the Empire or their vicious Inquisitorius. During this time, Kanan drifted from planet to planet, drowning his woes in booze and attempting to woo university girls. For some time, Kanan never stayed in one place for too long, but he did live in a flophouse next door to a cantina named the Asteroid Belt. He worked at the Asteroid Belt as a bartender from time to time, he drove a hover bus, and he piloted the ship Expedient, which was a mining transport ship owned by the mining company Moonglow Polychemical. While piloting the Expedient, he traveled between the planet Gores and its moon, Cinda. Number 5. Kanan has previously had a run-in with Imperial Naval Officer Ray Sloan. Ray Sloan was a human female naval officer of the Galactic Empire. She was instrumental in the Empire's survival following the aftermath of the Battle of Endor. Rewind roughly 20 years or so and Kanan met Captain Ray Sloan as she was looking for the bomber Skelly at Moonglow Polychemicals headquarters. Skelly was a Clone Wars veteran and an explosive expert. Attempting to stop Moonglow from weakening the structure of the moon world of Cinda, Skelly conducted an unauthorized test bombing in Cinda's Zone 42 intended as a demonstration of the danger of Moonglow's mining on Cinda. During this time, Kanan also discovered a plot to destroy Cinda by the Count Denetrius Vidian. Count Vidian was a wealthy mogul of the Thorolide mining industry and one of the Galactic Empire's most prominent efficiency experts and had control of both Cinda 
and Gorse, Vidian concocted a scheme to destroy Cinda in an attempt to undermine his business rival, Lero Danth, while simultaneously exploiting the moon's thoralide reserves. Kanan was able to warn Ray Sloan about an upcoming attack on Cinda by stating that he was a deep cover agent of the Emperor, which culminated in the deaths of both Count Vidian and Skelly during an explosion. Number 6. Kanan met Harrison Dula following a street fight. During Kanan's time piloting the Expedient and on the planet of Cinda, he was forced to use the Force to protect himself and a miner from an explosion that had gone off, the same explosion that was detonated by the aforementioned Skelly. Kanan immediately left Cinda and the Gore system, but returned when he discovered that Skelly had stowed away on his ship. Kanan was returning Skelly to the Moonglow's security chief when he crossed paths with Hera. Hera had actually hired a criminal gang known as the Sarlax to stage a fight outside of Moonglow's headquarters so that she could rescue Skelly. Due to the distraction, Hera was able to rescue Skelly, but the gang's leader, Charco, turned on her and tried to rob her. Before the Sarlax could assault her, Kanan came to her aid and helped her defeat the gang. Number 7. It was Kanan's idea to join Hera on the Ghost. Kanan made the suggestion to join Hera and the Ghost after the Gorse conflict. Kanan had already revealed his true Jedi self to her when he saved her by using the Force. And just like that, Kanan and Hera would eventually expand the Ghost crew and would work to fight against the Empire. Number 8. Kanan did not become a Jedi Knight until later in his life. After having his Jedi Master ripped from him at a young age, Kanan was not very confident in his own skills and abilities as both a Jedi and a teacher. However, while on Lothal, Kanan discovered a Force-sensitive teenager by the name of Ezra Bridger. Kanan eventually wound up taking Ezra on as his Padawan. Sometime later, when Kanan visited the Jedi Temple on Lothal with Ezra and Ahsoka Tano, he had a vision of being in a dojo with a Jedi Temple Guard known as the Sentinel. The Sentinel warned Kanan that Ezra would fall to the dark side and that he should be eliminated. Kanan, however, refused and began to duel with the Sentinel and two other temple guards. After Kanan vowed to do his best with training Ezra, he was knighted by the Sentinel and became a Jedi Knight. The Sentinel then revealed himself to be the Grand Inquisitor. Number 9. Kanan had a special connection to Lothwolves. Lothwolves were large, wolf-like creatures native to the planet Lothal. By the Imperial Era, it was widely believed that Loth Wolves were extinct. However, Kanan and the Ghost crew encountered Loth Wolves and discovered that Loth Wolves had a special connection to the Force as well as Lothal, to which they acted as the guardians of the light side on the planet. Loth Wolves were sentient and were capable of speaking a minimal amount of galactic basic. Although they did not speak often, they were highly intelligent creatures. Since they possessed a strong connection to the Force of Lothal, they were able to achieve remarkable feats, including crossing through the world between worlds, which allowed them to travel vast distances, such as traveling from the northern hemisphere of Lothal to the southern hemisphere. As the Ghost crew began to encounter them more, Kanan learned that he had a special connection to a specific Lothwolf, a white Lothwolf that appeared to possibly be the leader of the wolf pack. That same Lothwolf even knew Kanan's name was actually Doom. Following Harrison Dula's immediate capture by the Empire after the failed airstrike on the Thai Defender plant, en route to attempt to free her, Kanan was stopped by the White Loth Wolf and two other Loth Wolves. The Loth Wolf gave Kanan some kind of message, although we do not hear that message. As the Ghost crew regrouped and planned an operation to free Hera, Kanan meditated all while the White Loth Wolf silently watched him through the grass. Afterwards, when Kanan and the Ghost crew freed Hera and were attempting to evade the Empire, Kanan sacrificed himself to save the lives of Hera, Sabine, and Ezra. Although we didn't get to hear what the White Loth Wolf said to Kanan prior to Hera's rescue, it is implied that the White Loth Wolf informed Kanan he would have to sacrifice himself to save the lives of his friends and his lover, Hera, thus committing a brave and truly Jedi act. Number 10. Kanan's legacy lives on in more ways than one. Following Kanan's death, Chopper convinced Hera to add a piece of Kanan's Jedi holocron on her Kalakori, which was a revered Twi'lek heirloom passed from parent to child through generations, representing him as an official honorary member of the Syndulla family. As the Ghost crew continued to press their fight against the Empire, they fought bravely and eventually helped liberate Lothal from the clutches of the Empire. 
Sometime after the liberation, Hera gave birth to a child, a boy that she conceived with Canaan before his death, naming him Jason. Jason largely inherited Canaan's looks, in spite of being a hybrid between a human and a Twi'lek, which was Hera's species. Additionally, to honor Canaan's memory, Sabine painted a mural of him and the other members of the ghost crew, flanked by loath wolves and loath cats to show that they operated like a family. Kanan Jarrus has become one of mine and Danny's favorite characters in the Star Wars canon. His spirit, determination, and valor led him to becoming a Jedi Knight and he fought for justice alongside the people that he loved, providing a much needed hand in the eventual toppling of the Empire. But what are your thoughts about Kanan? What are some of your favorite facts about the lovable Jedi Knight Kanan Jarrus? Let us know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Follow Dan's on Fandoms on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Tumblr, all at Dan's on Fandoms. Thanks for watching, and stay nerdy.